Hello, I'm Ben Welch and welcome to 442's YouTube channel and the latest episode of The Injury Clinic. In today's episode, we are going to be visiting the Centre for Health and Human Performance and one of their top physios, Tom Jackson. Tom is going to show us how to diagnose any injury and then rehab it back to match winning strength so we can get you back out on the pitch and playing. Okay, so we're here with Tom. Tom has been a physio for Charlton, Southampton and Fulham. Massively experienced, used to working with elite footballers. Now he gets to work with a rubbish amateur footballer like me. So Tom, thank you for taking this time. Thanks for us. Nice to meet you. So imagine average footballer comes in, plays Sundays, plays Saturdays, maybe a five-a-side game. He comes in, he says, Tom, I've hurt my knee. What are the first things we do to establish what's wrong with his knee? Yeah, no, um, no problems. So the first thing that we're going to do is have a good sit down and a chat and find out what you've done and how you've done it. Um, so what I want to know is the mechanism of your injury. Once we've gone through that assessment, which we already have done, um, I then want to go and have a look and, and see what you're looking like with regards to your knee in that okay, position, great. okay? So if you want to have a seat on the bed. So just for everyone watching at home, I did my knee, I was we were playing in a game, someone shot, I slid across them and their, their foot connected with the back of my knee. wasn't instantly painful but when I got up there was some instability in my knee and it, it, in my knee and it felt a bit weird. So the key thing really is to look at, A I've seen you when you've walked in, you've not walked in with any massive limp um, which is quite important, you're obviously reasonably functional, I've watched you in terms of when you're getting changed, you're happy to stand on this leg, um, happy to take shoes on and off and, and balance on it, so there's, there's nothing that is screamingly obvious for me at this moment in time. If I look comparatively at your knee, there's no major swelling um, compared to the other side. It doesn't feel hot to the touch compared to the other side, and it's not got a, a big bed area. So it's not in a massive kind of inflammatory state at this moment in time. So first thing we want to do is just see if there's any swelling. So I'm just gonna do a little kind of, it's called a sweep test. So from there, we're just gonna brush that fluid away. If there is anything, and if there was, there'd be a little bleb will come out into this area effectively of, of fluid. So that's looking at is there anything within the knee joint itself that's causing inflammation and swelling um, at the moment, not for you. So then I'm going to move on and look at your range of movement. So a bit of hyperextension, that's pretty normal for you. So we've got a little ligament in the inside of your knee here. Yeah, that, 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 that is and that's hurt. quite unpleasant here. Yeah. Yeah. That, that really hurts, yeah. The meniscus and the medial ligament kind of communicate with each other. So there's fibres that go on and attach um, from that medial ligament onto the meniscus. So the two can be damaged. And I think there's probably some damage around that area for you. I think you've done deep fibres of your medial ligament. So that's where I rotate your leg outwards and then apply that lateral or medial force from the outside here. So I'm gapping this medial ligament and stressing you. That's causing you some discomfort. Tom, so we've assessed my knee, we've seen that it probably needs a little bit further investigation, we need to get a scan, but imagine you know, a frustrated footballer, they've, they're injured, yeah. they need to wait for the scan, what can they do in the meantime to maybe improve their situation? So, key thing for you at the moment is to make sure that we've got some stability. So, irrespective of whether there's an injury that needs to go and have surgery or not, you need to get that hip stability particularly better. Um, so we saw when you were doing that single leg squat, particularly on the right hand side, you were a bit all over the place. So we need to make that a little bit better for you. We're going to give you some glute exercise to do. So if I can ask you to lie down on the mat. Yeah. From this position, I'm going to ask you to bridge up. So you're going to push up through your heels and lift your bottom off the floor. That's it, good. And then slowly lower back down again. Okay, so same thing, rolling up, squeezing that glute, and back down. Good. We'll come back now, we're going to do the same thing, it's an, um, another swivel bridge. What this is doing is adding an element of um, balance into it as well. So the idea is to keep your feet flat on the ball, bring your knees again about hip width apart, and from that position it's exactly the same as you had before. To start with we're just going to work a small amplitude of movement, so I don't want you coming all the way up. So that's a bit big to start with, so just there to start with, back down just until you get that control. So do three or four of those. So to start with, I'm just going to get you to stand on one foot, slight bend in your knee, and we're just going to stay in that position. So it's, you want a little bit of an unstable surface on this mat, albeit it's very thin. We can make it harder by adding more unstable surfaces. So if you're at home, stand on a pillow, stand on a cushion, something like that, 
um, providing you've got good stability. And you can see as you're working here, muscles in the lower leg are working hard, glutes are working to stabilize, and there's just a little bit of rock in there. But I ask you to close your eyes from that position. See straight away that that becomes much harder. So you take away the visual cues and that becomes a harder exercise straight away. So the other thing you can do is just standing on your right leg, just do some rotational stuff. So just controlling around. We can obviously make that more fun towards the latter stages where we're getting you kicking a football. There's somebody throwing a football back. We haven't got one here at the moment. Somebody throwing a football back, you're doing some volleys. So just to start with, we're just doing a little bit of pop it back chest pass to me. So don't be worried, I can catch. So just gonna pop it and get you moving. And then in a second, we're gonna just take you off and change that range, all right? We've heard all this stuff from Tom. We've worked on some exercises. Now I need to go and have my scan, get to the root of the problem, and then we can move on. Okay, Tom, so uh, a few months have passed since I first come to see you, injured in October, come to see you in November. We did a few sessions and then we decided that with the way the knee was reacting, it's more better to ease off. What, why is that important and kind of what are the benefits of doing that as, as an, a patient and what kind of things would you be looking out for in that period of rest? So during any kind of reactive process with a knee, we're into an inflammatory state. Uh, inflammation takes quite a while to calm down. With your own knee, we were getting to a point where we were almost exacerbating that inflammation with the loading that we were doing. So enabled to, to give it a time of rest, it allows that inflammation to settle down, allows you to start to improve again in terms of the feeling that you were feeling in your knee. You had a, a level of instability that you were noticing. That subsequently settled down. Uh, alongside the exercise program that you were doing, it allows the muscles to activate and you get more proprioception, which is the control within your knee, where your knee is in space. Um, allows those muscles to work a lot more and just you generally become a bit stronger. So in the previous sessions that we've had, we've been working on strength and control of your knee. Those exercises that we've just done there are, a lot, are kind of the end stage rehabilitation exercises. They're based on whole body control movements and they're gonna put your knee under significant stress uh, in terms of control and patterning. And if you're unable to keep those patterns up, then you're, you're basically not gonna be fit to return to sport. So I'm looking at, by completing those, are you now at a stage where we can progress you back into a football type scenario. Lateral bounds off the BOSU, really great exercise to test your balance and your control as you land on the floor on that static leg. Things like the ice skaters, again, look, they're a great whole body workout. They're gonna work your glutes, which is the key muscles for stabilization of your lower limb. The Viper step backs, which are the ones coming through here, um, again, a really strong exercise for both the hip mobility. The drop uh, downs off the box are actually a really good exercise for putting high level of load of eccentric strength through your quads, uh, getting your glutes again to absorb and stabilize your, your proximal body weight and also loading into the tendon. And then the final one that we did was the plyometric box jumps and that's a pure explosive exercise. Can you generate sufficient force through your both your legs in order to drive up onto that 24 inch box so it's a, a pretty decent sized box as you felt um, and then can you control that movement on the way back down again so lowering down on the affected side so at this stage in the rehabilitation i want your knee to feel normal effectively if you're still feeling like it's unstable or you're getting some pain or particularly if your knee reacts subsequently then you're probably too far or you're trying to do too much too early and you need to go back a stage into the strengthening phase before you can start loading up onto that side. We are four months along now uh, from when I first come to see you. What stage are we at? Where's my knee at? And now what are, the, what are we looking to push on with next? So your knee now is really nice and stable. Uh, ligaments are looking really strong. There's no laxity within the knee. There's no pain in the knee when I'm testing it. So really fantastic. You've done loads of work in the gym in terms of your balance work, which is fundamentally most important. And you've done a lot of strength work. So that strength work is gonna give you really good stability in your knee. Now it's a matter of testing out to see that you're able to cope with the stresses of football prior to putting you back onto a football pitch and making sure that you're fine with, with all of that before releasing you to go and play again. Now today, 
was, were ramping up the pressure on the knee, the movement, the mobility. Can you just sort of briefly explain what were we doing in, in the gym and what those exercises, what are we testing and looking for? So today we're going to be starting to kind of transition you through to striking a football and uh, multi-directional movement. Uh, we're going to look at a bit of ballistic stuff in terms of your, your jumping and your reactive um, strength from that. Uh, then we're also going to look at some of the kind of kicking mechanisms for you. Uh, and then finally just do some multi-directional drills where we're trying to get you to change direction and, and work off both legs. So that you can then take that out onto a football pitch in your rehabilitation and have a confidence you've already exposed yourself to those movements. Right, so let's go in the gym and see how my knee holds up. So what's next for me now? So for you now, it's about going out and doing some um, functional football training. So doing some side foot passes, continuing to build on your multi-directional stuff, doing some cutting movements when you're doing your sprints. When you've done all of that, which will probably be another week, 10 days um, of loading, then you can be looking to go back into a football training session and then back into a football match after that. So there you go guys, so happy to be back out on the pitch and playing and I couldn't have done it without the help of the Centre for Health and Human Performance and Tom Jackson who have been absolutely fantastic throughout. If you get injured, I highly recommend you go see them. Now if you want to hear more about CHHP and Tom, check out the links in the video description below. And if you're keen to explore more rehab content, please head over to our website www.442.com forward slash performance and search injuries. Now before you go, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and if you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. Thank you.